video, we will give you an overview of navigating Hyrasmus from a behavior analyst user perspective. The first thing that you'll see when you log in is your name on this top blue bar. You'll also see your organization's name here as well. If you want to log out, you'll be able to select this icon to do so. And these three horizontal lines will move that menu out of the way so you can more readily see this space. On the top right hand side, you will see this bell that is for notifications. So any notifications that you receive, uh, you'll be able to access and manage here. On the menu, uh, you should see this drop down where you can select your clients. Once selected, you can see every learner that you have access to as a user. As you can see here, I've added a heart to a handful of learners. So if you want quick, easy access to your specific caseload, but you as a user have access to those outside of your specific caseload, um, it can just be a nice way to easily manage and bring those uh, frequent clients uh, to the top of your menu. You can also type and that will bring up that learner's alias. Selecting that learner will take you to their home page. So on a learner's home page, I can see all of their active programs, so things that we're currently working on, and those can either appear in alphabetical order like these, or I can have them sorted by treatment area and sub area or domain. So just dependent on how you set that up um, will dictate what that learner's home page looks like. At the top of a learner's page, you'll see that I have some sessions in place. And a session is essentially just a group of programs that I want to run together. And I can dictate who see the, sees these sessions when they're logged in. So for instance, my daily session may be viewable by all users other than parents. My parent session is something that just my parents see when they're logged in. When I uh, look at my menu, I also can see some other things specific to the learner who I've selected. So everything from home down to files is specific right now to this learner, Bennett. When I go to programs, uh, this is where I can add and manage the existing programs. So if I wanted to create a program from scratch, I could do so. I can also select any program here and edit accordingly. If I go to history, this is where I can see past sessions that have been run and, and uh, follow up with them accordingly. Progress is where I'm going to see the progress that my learner is making. So here's where I can uh, see a cumulative graph. As soon as I have any master targets, this will appear. Uh, and I can also see a list format of any mastered targets. If I scroll down a bit, I can see all of his programs and uh, I can see some quick stats about each of those programs. So things like percentage completion of that program, how many targets are in each phase, how many trials on average it takes to master a target within that program, etc. If I want to get into the data, I can simply click on the name of any of those to get to those graphs. Um, we'll dig into graphs in a little bit here, so I'll follow up with that shortly. Um, but I do want to go back to the progress page and also showcase the reporting option. So here's where if you have any treatment plans or, or reports um, that you can apply templates to uh, and create new reports that are specific to that particular learner as well. The last section that we have here is files. So this is where you can add files that are relevant for that learner and you can dictate which type of user has access to those particular files. Looking below this gray line, uh, I can see some more broad content that doesn't apply specifically only to that learner. So I can see my library 
And this is shared across your entire organization. So you may have some content um, that is shared across and you can uh, easily add any new uh, or any library content to a learner's profile simply by selecting which programs you want to add and hitting copy to client. So in this case, I'm going to add some programs to my learner Jack's page um, and hit save and that will add those accordingly. I'll actually come back and do that in a moment. All right, I can also go to my settings and under settings, I have uh, two, some options here. So the first one is my account and here's where I can uh, adjust the language that the app is in. So if, uh, for instance, I speak something other than English, maybe Spanish um, as a first language, I can adjust that accordingly. I can also change my password here if needed. And then I can manage my notifications, um, just how I receive notifications here in Hyrasmus. Um, if I want them as a di daily digest, email, push, an app, or all of the above, um, I may have some ability to fine tune those here, just dependent on my organization. Below account, I have offline access. So here is where, uh, for those instances where uh, you may work in a rural area where access to Wi-Fi is limited at a learner's home, for instance, you can select up to five clients that you want um, to have offline access to. For those specific learners, you'll be able to, from start to finish, run um, multiple sessions, even if needed, um, offline entirely. The help section is our last piece here on the menu. And here is where everyone can access our knowledge base. So this is a searchable uh, library, if you will, of, of tutorials and content. Um, so for instance, I can type in anything I might have questions about, and that will bring me to um, some helpful guides uh, here as well. Going back here, we also have a support section. So here's where um, if I need support, um, perhaps I want to request a new feature, see what updates have been made lately on the platform, or submit a bug report if something's a little funky, um, we wanna hear about it right away. So this will be your go-to spot for that. You can also see what version of the app you're on uh, and verify your data storage region uh, by going to your app information.